Sairam. We all know that the only overseas travel that Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba, our dear Swami, has undertaken is to the East African countries of Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania in the June and July of 1968. But that is about his travel in the physical frame. He has been to several countries as is evident in many recorded instances and possibly innumerable millions of unrecorded instances. For example, during the World War II in the early 1940s, Swami showed his presence to Dr. Art Ong Jumsai and his mother in Thailand. That episode is recorded in this link above. But in that incident, Swami was not present in this frame that we recognize with the orange robe, with the black halo of hair. But then there are several instances where Swami has given darshan in this frame itself. While he was physically at Bangalore or Puttaparthi or Kodaikanal or some other place in India, his presence has been witnessed in different countries. The incident that I am going to narrate happened in circumstances that are interesting and a bit funny as well. The way in which it happened, like always, is amazing and jaw-dropping. But then, the confirmation of this miracle, the way it came, that is also very interesting. This is the story in the 1980s, the story of Baba in Bahrain. This is the story narrated by Dwarkanath uncle. For most part of his life, he has been an active member of the Brindavan Bhajan group and he resides in the city of Bangalore. This happened in 1983 when he was a resident of Manama in Bahrain. He was among the earliest Sai devotees from this country and in the February of 1981, along with a couple others, he set up the first ever Satisai center at Manama in Bahrain. In 1982, he was blessed with a son whom he named as Sai Gopal. Sai because of his love and his family's love for Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba and Gopal because they were Vaishnavites or that section of Hindus who believed in Lord Vishnu as a supreme deity. In 1983, the March of 1983, to celebrate the first birthday of their grandson, the in-laws of Mr. Dwarkanath, who used to stay in the Indian capital city of Delhi, they travelled to Manama in Bahrain. Mr. Dwarkanath's in-laws were going to stay there for a few weeks. During this time, Mr. Dwarkanath was regular in attending all the bhajans and other Sai activities that would happen. While the father-in-law joined in all these activities, the mother-in-law was very hesitant. And it was because she was fiercely loyal to her Mahavishnu, to her Narayana. And you know, it was believed that Swami is the Shiva Shakti Swarupa. We now know that he is Sarva Devata Tita Swarupa. He is all the forms of God and beyond as well. But believing him to be Shiva Shakti Swarupa, she felt, no, 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 no. Uh, this will be like not being loyal to Vishnu if I go to somebody who is supposed to be a personification of Shiva. That was the reason. In fact, her name was Mrs. Pankajam Sundaram and Mrs. Pankajam would not even touch Vibhuti because it was associated with Shiva and not Vishnu. You know, she was a staunch Vaishnavite. And therefore, on the 17th of March 1983, when Mr. Dwarkanath said that his dear friend Mr. Patel had invited them over to their home for a bhajan and bhojan session, meaning both bhajans and then after that dinner, Mrs. Pankajam Sundaram, you know, his mother-in-law said that she was not interested to go there. She actually was not wanting to go there because she is fiercely loyal to Lord Vishnu. But the reason she gave was, let me stay back and take care of Sai Gopal. He's alone at home. 
well that's another interesting thing she would never call him sai gopal she would just call him only gopal you know because gopal is krishna a form of vishnu and she didn't want to call sai i am just telling this so that you understand how staunch and firm she was in her love for vishnu in her love for narayana so she said she would take care of sai gopal so mr dwarkanath his father in law and others all of them left at around 7:30 pm now pankajam aunty staying back at home she was happy taking care of her little grandson she fed him his dinner and at around 9 9:30 in the night uh, since the baby boy was feeling hungry again she began to feed him milk that was when she heard a knock on the door persistent knocking on the door she wondered who it might be at this time of the night because they did not have any relatives or anybody here but then she remembered that one of her son in law dwarkanath's cousins stayed nearby and maybe her son in law had told them that she was staying alone at home and they were dropping in to check on her that is what she assumed so she goes to the door and she opens the lock the chain is still there and as she opens the door partially the sight that meets her eyes takes her breath away she is so shell shocked that she tries to slam the door shut immediately but then <laughs> let me now fast forward to around 10 pm at night this is the time when mr dwarkanath and his father in law and the others they are returning back home and they knock on the door there is nobody opening the door thinking that possibly his mother in law and the baby must have slept he takes his duplicate key and opens the door and when they open the door a surprising sight meets their eyes the mother in law is sitting at the dining table shell shocked shivering trembling not shivering actually trembling and there is vibhuti all over her forehead and looking at it they first thought that maybe she had a heart attack or something because she was a cardiac patient so the father in law rushes into the bedroom to get the tablets in the meanwhile mr dwarkanath approaches his mother in law and asks her what happened and she just says swami had come he applied vibhuti to me and he left <laughs> now when you hear this you wonder whether she is hallucinating what what happened because Swami is back in Puttaparthi there and how how can what are you saying you please have a glass of water relax and take it easy tell us what happened she says no swami came here he came here at 9:30 i heard the knock on the door and when i went to open it i saw swami standing there i was so shocked i thought that this is somebody playing a trick on me and therefore i tried to shut the door shut look i even have an injury from that she had an injury on her hand because of trying to force the door shut but before she could do that swami spoke to her in tamil and said wait don't do that i have come here to give this apple to dwarkanath and in his right hand was an apple which swami showed <laughs> now she opens the chain and opens the door and swami is there and even as she did this swami shifted the apple from his right hand to his left hand materialized vibhuti and applied it on her forehead and then giving the apple to her he left and there was the apple which she said is for dwarkanath even after all this they found this too fantastic to believe you know there are apples at home maybe she picked up an apple from home and she has kept it here and friend swami appearing here that to do a non devotee see dear brothers and sisters who are we to judge who is a devotee who is not this is such a fallacy such a wrong thing that we think somebody is devoted based on our parameters and we think somebody is a non devotee again based on our foolish judgment the lord alone knows and and you know swami the supreme lord of lords will he be as narrow minded to think that oh she is devoted to vishnu and therefore not to me and so <laughs> it's not like that any love that is given to any form of the lord reaches the lord the same lord <laughs> 
इट रीच स्वामी सर्वदेव नमस्कारम साई प्रतिगच्छति द सैल्यूटेशन दट आई ऑफर टू एवरी गॉड रीचेस द सेम साई रियलाइजिंग दैट दे आर नॉट बिलीविंग हर मिसेस पंकजम सुंदरम सेड लिसन डू यू थिंक आई विल एवर अप्लाई विभूति टू माई सेल्फ that was an interesting point <laughs> she being such a staunch vaishnavite who would never touch vibhuti had so much vibhuti on her forehead mm, wow now that was convincing <laughs> imagine her staunchness is so much that this seemed like a more convincing point and then she adds on even if i apply vibhuti will i apply it as horizontal lines i will apply it as vertical lines Yes, dear brothers and sisters, that is another distinguishing mark. The Vaishnavites apply on their forehead vertical lines, whereas the Shaivites or worshippers of Shiva apply horizontal lines. So she was saying, even if I apply Vibhuti, will I apply it like this? I will apply it like this, right? <laughs> so they thought, oh, yeah, maybe. But even then, you know, though the others in Manama were informed of this amazing happening. Mr. Dwarkanath himself found it little hard to believe that Swami had appeared, you know. And to make matters more complicated, in their home they had a photograph of Swami sit sitting on a swing, holding an apple in his hand. Mr. Dwarkanath thought that seeing this photograph, maybe his mother-in-law got confused that Swami had actually appeared there. So it was very very difficult for them to accept this. So they began to pray to Swami to give an indication. and the indication came very soon the photograph that was in the room occupied by mrs pankajam began to shower profuse vibhuti from the 21st of march onwards this episode happened on the 17th of march swami appearing there from the 21st of march vibhuti began to flow profusely it began to bubble out of the photograph pouring out in large quantities very soon their home in manama became like a pilgrimage site <laughs> and devotees from all across bahrain began to land up there the bhajan sessions began to attract large crowds because of this miracle and then somebody came up with this idea saying why don't you send this episode this incident in writing to prashanti nilayam to sanatana sarathi you know because sanatan sarathi invites experiences from across the world why don't you do that now and this advice was given by mr vinod pasi who would later on become the chief financial officer for the entire central trust but back then he was in bahrain so based on that advice mr dwarkanath wrote this whole experience and posted it to puttaparthi one month later in the april of 1983 one member from bahrain mr suresh deshpande happened to be in puttaparthi and when he met professor kasturi there he happened to accost professor kasturi professor kasturi asked him where he was coming from when he said bahrain he said oh you know we have received an article from bahrain somebody has said that swami appeared in manama i have received that because he was the editor of sanatan sarathi so now mr suresh deshpande asks him asks professor kasturi so is that article going to be printed in the sanatan sarathi and professor kasturi says it is not that easy sir every article is personally vetted by bhagwan once swami approves then only will that article be published if not <laughs> it will join the hundreds of other articles in not getting published to the great delight of all the devotees in bahrain the july 1983 issue of sanatana sarathi carried an article by mr dwarkanath which said baba in bahrain that was the greatest confirmation for all the devotees in bahrain that swami had come because this was like swami himself saying yes i had been there and that is the story of baba in bahrain as i said earlier this 
as i said earlier this is a recorded instance of swami traveling there are millions of unrecorded instances and i am sure that many devotees out there would have experienced swami either in his direct form or in an indirect form or even in the omnipresent form they would have experienced his love grace and blessing here's an idea why not convert the comment section below into a satsang area and if any of you have experienced swami's omnipresence in your own places in your own homes in your own countries because swami is not bound by anything please do share it and well that satsang area will also provide me with wonderful material for future video talks in the meanwhile i pray to swami that our love for him keeps growing stronger and stronger and dear swami wherever we are in the world may we see you may we hear you may we feel you in our hearts may we love you forever and ever thank you jai sai ram